Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> this is what you wanted me to do? Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> what a birthday. You know, it's possibly the best birthday I've ever had. Mm. Again, born in 1962. I am now 62. That's double eights, and that is double infinity. And that is perfect for the current Lionsgate portal that we are experiencing. Also, 816, that's through, that's triple eights. Mm -hmm. Also, wait a minute, 2024 adds up to an eight. Oh, my God. I didn't even realize how fucking crazy this is, and I don't even know what it means. So it's like uh, eights up the wazoo for my birthday. It is an amazing, amazing eight day, yeah. Baby doll. What does it all mean, John? What does all this numerology mean? How does it affect me? What is going on? What is happening? Uh, it's too much to go into. Is it? Yeah. I just give you the numbers and so, so I can just go, wow, yeah. And you know it means something mystical and exciting, right? I guess it feels mystical and exciting in a way. In a strange way. It feels completely mystical and exciting. All right, so what was your favorite part of this birthday? Just being together. And, uh, well, let's take a look. Christopher brought home beautiful roses. Mm. And a, and a really pretty card. There's my roses. And there's my card. Christopher's uh, uh, brother and wife sent me a, a beautiful sunflower in a gorgeous floor vase. I'll, I'll show it off tomorrow in the sunlight. And cool new marker pens that I'm going to enjoy writing and drawing with, with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's funny. I need new marker. I need new good art pens. It's like everything that uh, everything is perfect. Mm. Christopher baked an excellent birthday cake. He, him and John sang happy birthday to me tonight, and I blew out the candle. That was fun. The whole day was fun. I even uh, well, even being sick was fun because I took a Benadryl and I was had the greatest meditation. I want to talk about the meditation for a minute, Laura. I was kind of at Forest Park, like Park Lane. Yeah. But it was really, really like a big, huge forest, which it is in the in the forest itself. But it was very, a lot of water and high cliffs. And, um, well, you were very able-bodied. That I remember about it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I was. I was scaling these these mountains and and jumping over uh, stones that that were over some very rapid running streams, and there were some beautiful amethyst uh, rocks in these streams and and stone facades that were. All amethyst. Oh, it was sort of like the amethyst realm then, wasn't it? Yeah. Are you going to give me any insight into this? Uh, one particular, uh, you had an opportunity to 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 take a, a not a not a shortcut, but a scenic route to where you were going, presumably home. But where do you think home was in that case? Well, it's just getting like that I was going toward like 80th Street, like the the back roads of what was the Interboro Parkway. But now it was just all there was no parkway. It was just all woods and and uh, stones and and streams. And you started to walk into that uh, into that sort of uh, dense uh, uh, forest uh, scene, right? 
Yes, and it was really beautiful, and it was like calling to me. Um, but I was like, oh, I'm all by myself, and I don't know what's in there. Like, what were you thinking? Probably a killer, or definitely like a killer, a murderer. Who would? And I was like, that's kind of a long walk from here. Um, I don't trust it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go in there. Even though it was very, it was very inviting. It looked so beautiful. I thought, gee, if I was on horseback or something, it would really be a different story. But I'm on foot and this is kind of scary and I'm not going to go. All right. Was I wrong to feel that way? I would have, I was with you but you were not picking up on that. Okay. If you had known I was right beside you, would you have gone? Yes, of course I would have gone. Yes, definitely. So the question is, why did you feel you were alone? Am I picking up on, uh, in trouble again? <laughs> God help me. I'm in trouble. What is wrong with me? I don't know why I, my meditations always have me feeling like I'm alone in this. It's uh, that that's a drawback. Well, uh, you could view it as a drawback or we could view it as we can view it as something that we need to work on. And that means we, me too. For some reason, there's a block there and you're not always picking up on the fact that I am right there. Are you always, of course I'm aware. <laughs> of course I'm aware that you're there. I'm, I'm there with you. We're talking about this now. Right. Okay. So what do you think the block is? Do you think it's my sinus? <laughs> it's definitely one of them. Right. Let's talk about the and again you had another forest park uh astral uh, journey uh, a couple of days ago or yesterday i don't recall i don't think we spoke about it we were in a in the parking lot at the dome right there was a concert at the parking lot in the dome and and i was in the at the dome and forest park there was a kind of a concert or a happening and uh, but i was in the parking lot uh, on again, on my way somewhere, leaving the parking lot, and I left Chris and the dogs in the parking lot to head off somewhere alone, and some very nice looking young man like just approached me and stood in front of me. And kind of looked like Daltrey, but it was you, yeah. But you only found that out at the end or when you woke up. Right. He came up to me with a big, happy smile on his face. Like, oh, hi, you know. And I was like, really nervous and just like, what does this guy want? Also thinking this guy is like, this guy is like, he's like a movie star or something. He's like too handsome, even like, he must be a maniac. <laughs> like, uh, who's the, what's that guy? Uh, American Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> All the girls love him, and he ends up just being a maniac murderer. Oh. What's wrong? I didn't say you were that. All right. Please don't think that. I don't think that. All right, because that'll be a problem. All right. I'm not saying that, but I didn't even think that in the thing, but I just... You backed off, yeah, because your face just fell. You could see I was scared. And you just, like, stepped aside, like, oh, she's not happy to see me. And I kind of made it very clear, like, listen, I got to be somewhere. I don't know you. I got to go. And you looked 
crestfallen. Again, it didn't look like you, John Lennon. It looked like some kind of just handsome, like a young Daltrey, maybe. Movie Tommy, that that era. And uh, But I was very nervous about why you were standing in front of me acting so familiar. I was like, how dare he act so familiar with me? You don't know me. Uh, very, I was very suspicious. And then you asked me, what are you heading down to Woodside? Which, which Woodside is where I used to rehearse with my band at the underground. And I wasn't aware that I was going to Woodside, but I answered quickly just to get away from you. Yeah, I have to head down. And you said, where are you going down toward the trestles? Which is like a really seedy area. Uh, and I just said, yeah. And you were like, oh, okay. And then he, I was aware that you were following me. Like keeping an eye on me protectively as I was going away. That's been our history. Right. There's been that there's been that block. You know, and I know we we uh we kind of get sick of people always talking about runners and chasers in the twin flame phenomenon because it seems so silly. It it is silly. It's ridiculous, but it happens uh cerebrally um and technically it is a phenomenon what those people most of them on quora and such are talking about is not twin flame running and chasing it it's stalking and and fearfulness because and they just want to give it a name it's it i tell you more than 9 times out of 10 those are not twin flame relationships however you could look at our astral misadventures as me always chasing and you always running away. All right. Well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to keep doing that. Okay. So this is good. So this is just a good conversation to have about it. And, uh, we we gotta we gotta figure out like a uh, a safe word, so that it will really hit you that it's me. Why don't you just start singing one of your songs or something? I mean, in the other the, the other time when I wrote when I was keeping a dream journal, you you came looking like duck face, and you were screaming um. Oh, you beautiful doll, you great, big, beautiful doll. How the fuck am I going to know that that's you looking like Duckface, this crazy neighbor that I used to have, screaming like that in an Al Jolson voice? It was frightening. And you had me trapped in a in a jam poles drugstore. <laughs> Mom, he thinks it's funny, Lena. We told you there's something wrong with him. <laughs> he's not he he he's confident that that you'll that you'll get there. But he's having fun. This is what he does. And yeah, we've told him you really really push it with with that girl, John. We've told we've told him that a million times. There's something wrong with him. <laughs> See, that makes me a little, not scared, but like, why do you act like that? And then you get upset with me for running away. No, I like it when you run away. Why? Because I like chasing you. So what is this conversation even about? It's like, so that's just the way it's going to be. What are you talking about? We are talking to each other. We're together. We're together. What are you worried about? I'm not worried about anything, but 
Ah, what are you going to say? It would have been nice to to feel good about walking through those woods and having a nice time and and enjoying all that beautiful scenery that was in there. I I knew it was going to be beautiful. At least I thought so. Well, you don't know that for sure though, mate, right? Into the woods it was just 1550, right? It double sixes, yeah. Uh, it was, you know, into the woods can be very uh, deceiving. You think you're going into this beautiful thing and, like, look what happened to Hansel and Gretel and all that. Well, that's true, too. So what are we, Hansel and Gretel? In a sense, yes, we have to protect each other. So I was protecting you. Were you really? Yes. I was pulling you out of the woods. Oh, so I shouldn't go in the woods. No. I would have, I would have, yeah, your feelings of foreboding were proper. For a change, you protected yourself. Okay, I get a little confused, um, but I'm working on not being so confused about, about this. Okay, good. What else was your favorite part of you? Are we done with that conversation? Yes. I love you. I loved watching Napoleon Dynamite today. I love you too. And that was fun. Yeah. That movie is so good. I cry every time. I cry during Napoleon Dynamite. I love that Chip is so happy with La Fonda. I love Napoleon and his girlfriend at the end playing that punch bowl thing. I love Uncle Rico. Everybody gets a boyfriend and girlfriend at the end. Uncle Rico meets that woman by the by his van. And he's such a fucking lunatic, you know, and and he and like it's like it's it's re, it, it reinforces that there's somebody for everybody no matter how mean and nasty the world can seem that you shouldn't give up hope 1717 and I even love um, that Aunt Jessie uh, or Grandma Jessie at the end. Uh, is that her name? And she's kissing Tina the llama. I mean, I, I just start crying. I love Napoleon Dynamite. I love you, Lena. And there's a great free viewing on archives.org. We posted it on our Quora page. Pristine, beautiful free viewing of the full movie of Napoleon Dynamite. For free. And we just got the documentary station on network, on uh, on uh, the Amazon Prime network. So we're going to be watching some good documentaries this week. Um, again, for free. Um... You got the you get the free deals, folks. You you don't have to pay big bucks for uh, uh what else? Oh, we had wonderful, delicious sushi today, which energized Bunny to no end. He was racing around the house like a fucking Tasmanian devil. Bunny is like oh uh, he's a hundred percent. He is a hundred percent that little boy. And what else? Oh, and so, yeah, yeah, we mentioned that we had birthday cake. Uh, we're going to have fish and chips this weekend. That's exciting. Mm. Love you. Love you too, babe. And what else? Well, let's draw. Well, do you want to do a card? We could do a card, but that means I have to move my hand. All right, don't do it. Mm. I'll give you one. How's that? All right. Ace of Pentacles. Okay. Wealth beyond your wildest dreams in every aspect of your life. This is going to be an, an absolutely incredible, incredible, incredible year for you. Now let's add up, and for me, and for all of us, um, let's add up your year of birth and the year that it is currently. All right, so the my year of birth, 1962, is the number nine. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Am I crazy? Uh, one and nine is ten. 
And six and two is eight. Eighteen, one and nine. Yes, okay. Nineteen sixty-two is a nine. Uh, this is an eight. This year, two thousand and twenty-four is an eight. Nine and eight is seventeen. And numerologically, that they add up to a number eight. Uh, so this again is the the two my year of birth and the current year, add up to a number eight, which is infinity and strength strength and infinite possibilities so it's been some difficult uh months leading up to today ones that i did not foresee i really saw myself as being much more physically active and getting outdoors i really saw that for myself this summer, but it didn't turn out that way because it just didn't. So what do you think of that, John? I think that we are gearing up toward the autumn months and you know how autumn affects you. Yes, I do. It is my absolute favorite time. Um, Johnny's birthday, uh, Halloween, just good stuff. I love autumn. That's my time. The season of the witch. The white witch in my case. And all my fellow uh, uh, holy practitioners and priestesses. Um, it really kicks us into high gear. And um, so that's exciting. So yeah. Hopefully, I'll be bundled up in my brand new beautiful flannels that are waiting for me uh, to sit out on, on my porch and do some readings and get back into the swing of, uh, of activity and fresh air and sunshine. And John, I just want that so much. It would just be very energizing for me and it would just be very positive. And then I could start really building up my um, my ability to make it downstairs and get to the dentist, <laughs> which is like a big deal. I, I really want to do that. But, but what? Everything you're mentioning is yours for the taking. It's all going to happen. All right. Okay. It's all going to happen, but it has to happen in its time. That's about all I could say. Mm. How hard it is to be patient. But this is a time of required, quiet perseverance. And these conversations are important. And these meditations are even more important. And I love you. Praise be God and Mother, I love you too. Off we go into the good night, indeed. Happy birthday, Lena. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs>